I'm Jim Dre, and welcome to the shop. Today I've got my three apprentices in the shop here with me, and we're going to be talking about having kids in the shop. How do you do it safely? How do you have fun? How do you get them to want to do more woodworking? Let's dive in and take a look at this. So I have my three kids here, Arthur, who is six, JJ, who's eight, and Melody, who's nine. Um, I've been working with Melody in the shop since she was about six. JJ likes to be in here occasionally, but it's not his absolute favorite thing. And we're going to be starting to do some things with Arthur and seeing if he likes it. Every kid is a little bit different, so you have to learn a little bit about them. But first I want to look at how do they actually work at this when this bench is made for me and it's like up here for them. Now when you're usually working at a bench, you want this to be at a comfortable working height. And for Melody, this is not very comfortable. So a while ago, I made a little step stool for my wife, but hey, it works out pretty well. Step up. And now it's actually at a pretty usable height, pretty close to where the elbow would be for pushing and planing. Now it's going to limit your stepping ability, so that's something to learn, but for right now we're just going to be starting on some of the basic skills. To teach sawing, I like to use a Japanese saw. It's a little bit easier for a kid to start and learn how to pull it. And the problem is, starting the saw is often very difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start the cut, and then I'm going to give it to them and let them go to town on it. Once it's been started, they can go to town cutting. And the nice thing about this is it gives them a chance to learn. They're going to be cutting very slowly, and there's going to be a desire like, give it to me, let me take it. But letting them do it, letting them struggle, letting them learn how to cut, and taking forever to cut all the way down the board is a great thing to learn. Sometimes they'll come into the shop and they'll just want to cut something. And so I'll put a board and a vise and let them go to town. While I'm working on something else, they can be cutting for a half hour or so and just learning how the saw feels, learning how it moves. And the more you do it, the more you learn. Every now and then I'm going to step in and say, ah, now move your hands a little bit different or pull it a little bit longer, longer strokes. Yep, there you go. You may need to back up a little bit. There you go. Follow that line straight on down. Now, I really want this to be fun for the kids. I want this to be something that they enjoy and it's going to be something that they remember and want to do more of. And for that, I don't want really difficult wood with switching grains and hard things to work with. So as much as I love white oak, I'm probably not gonna have the kids playing with white oak. Most of the time I'm gonna have them working on whatever scraps I have lying around. Little pieces and bits that I don't mind them ripping up and I've got a pile of junk over there that they can go through and play and whatever then there they want, they can play with. But if I'm gonna get a project specifically for them, I wanna pick something easy. If you have a Menards, they actually sell a wood that they call mahogany. It's actually a Filipino mahogany. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's incredibly easy to work. It feels like balsa when you're cutting it, but it's a fairly durable wood and makes a really good project. Next, if you're gonna get a specific wood, I would say poplar. Poplar is very easy to cut. It's very easy to plane. It's simple to work with. It doesn't take a lot of work, but yet you can still get good projects out of poplar and it's relatively cheap. You like poplar? Pepper. But then there's always pine, and pine works really well. It's easy to cut and it's easy to plane. Uh, sometimes it splinters apart and it's not quite as homogenous as I would like. Now, planes can be really difficult to learn because they take a little bit more force, they take some power, and they take upper body strength. And you might not always have that. So this is one of the times I like to come alongside. You hold the hand back here, put your hand on top, and then I'll actually come along with her and provide a little bit of the force. And this way she can start to learn that I'm pushing on her hand, and her hand is still what's doing the work, but she can learn how much force it's actually going to take. Normally, I'm going to be using a number three. It's a narrow plane, it's easy to hold, and it's a little bit easier to push along. But if you have a five and a quarter, these actually work really well. They're the same narrow blade as a number three, a little bit longer, and so they have a little bit more force behind them. And these can be a great plane for a kid to use. But if that's too much, a simple block plane works well. And this can be a great chance to teach how do you hold a plane? How do you go with the grain? How do you chamfer down and keep it from turning side to side? They're going to go a lot slower. They're going to have to learn. And there's a lot of times you're going to be like, just give it to me, let me do it. But let them do the work. Let them learn. Let them experience. Everyone's got to learn, and this is one of the best ways. Especially when you get curls like that. So Another great tool to learn is the spoke shape. And this is one that is incredibly fun. So sometimes I'll just put a stick in the vise and let the kids go at it. This is something that is incredibly easy to learn, especially if you have a large, flat bottom spoke shape, like the 151 here or this aluminum one that I got a while ago, that they just make it much easier not to worry about being rounding. They're easy to teach because I can come along and like my normal, I can pinch it and then we can work together and they can learn what does it actually feel like when you get a nice good curl coming along here? What does it feel like when you're jammed up? How do you clean out the curls? And before you know it, 
you've run all the way through the stick and you've got to put a new stick in here. Sometimes the youngest kids just want to hit things. And I made these mallets for the kids a while ago so that they can just pound on things. Here, take it. And sometimes they just like to pound on things around the shop. But some of the best things to learn is how to use a chisel. And this can teach some things. You have to be careful with an open, sharp edge like this, as with all the tools, the sharper the better. But they can draw lines in the wood. And so you can see, you can draw one line and turn another way, and then before you know it, they've written their name in the board. And one of the best ways to encourage a kid to work in the shop is to give them their own tools. This is a toolbox that Melody made a few years ago, and she actually has her own YouTube channel, Melody's Workbench. Um, during the summers, we occasionally put out videos uh, with things that she makes. And you can stock this with you know, a cheap Harbor Freight pole saw, braces and bits, a block plane, some cheap chisels, screwdrivers, a mallet. And these are things that they can have fun playing with themselves. This is their own toolbox, and they can have fun at their own bench. Maybe you could make a mallet for them out of a simple block of wood and put a, a handle into it. And there are lots of projects that you can do, but find something that interests them. Making their own toolbox, making a bird feeder or a birdhouse. Making a whirly gig is a lot of fun because they get to work with a spokeshave and they get to make a toy for themselves. They get to take outside and have a little bit of fun. Maybe they'd want to make their own puzzle or something like that that they can put together and play with or show their friends. Find something that they want to build. Something that's relatively simple and something that uses a few different skills, from sawing to drilling holes to cutting things down and planing them into place. Sometimes some simple dowel joinery can do amazing things. But above all, make the shop someplace fun. Someplace where they can act a little bit crazy and have a good time. Don't make it the staunch place where they have to follow an immense amount of rules. And this is one of the things I like about having a hand tool shop, is that there are less chances of hurting them because everything in here is flesh sensing. Yes, they're going to cut themselves. Yes, they're going to get scrapes and they're going to get cuts. Oh well, I get scrapes and cuts all the time. It's just part of the fun. But don't make it so protective that there's no way to have some fun. Now, if you want to see a project um, with the kids involved, Melody has her own channel where she makes some things. But I also have all of the videos I've done in the past with bird feeders and bird houses and the tool tote and whirly gig and other toys and gifts. I have a lot of little projects like that that the, the kids can build along with you. So go have some fun. Show the kids other projects that they can do and say, hey, which one of these do you want to build? And then book out a few hours and go have a little bit of fun in the shop. They will remember it for the rest of their lives, and so will you. And those are some of the best memories of spending a little bit of time in the shop having a bit of fun. So I hope you like this video, and if you want to see more like it, I'll have a few links to them down below. And uh, go check out Melly's channel. I know she would love to see you there. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Hi. Melody, what's your joke? Why did the dentist give cotton candy to the patients? Why? For a sweet tooth. Arthur, what's your joke? Um, knock, knock. Who's there? there. Um, strawberry. Strawberry who? Strawberry you! <laughs> okay, JJ, what's your joke? Why did the wood jump a hundred times? Why did Why? the wood jump a hundred times? To get shaved! <laughs> now you know where I get it from. <laughs>